participants in retail banking in India. We all know the banking scenario in India is at the crossroads and is continuously evolving, but the progress but the progress has been remarkable over the past decade, with the retail banking sector expected to grow at a rate of 30%, players are focusing more and more on the retail and are walking up to the potential of this sector of banking. In this lesson, we will state the role of unorganized sector in retail banking, explain the role of commercial banking in retail banking, identify the role of private banks in retail banking, explain the role of foreign banks in retail banking, and explain the cooperative and regional rural bank in retail banking. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain the participants in retail banking, discuss the unorganized sector, explain the commercial bank, discuss private banks and foreign banks, explain regional, rural banks and cooperative banks. In retail banking, there are various participants, viz. unorganized sector, commercial banks, private banks, foreign banks, regional banks, cooperative societies coming in the retail banking sector of India. With much scope in the avenues for operations, the true challenge for the banks in the current scenario is to stand out in the midst of hard-hitting regulations of the apex body. Globalization, consolidation and want of expertise are drastically redefining the banking taxonomy. Thus, the participants, be it an Indian financial player or a foreign entrant in the retail sector, have to adopt a different approach in everything, viz. products, services to hold the Indian market share, as a popular saying goes, as variety is the spice of life. The informal sector is referred to as the unorganized sector. This sector generally corresponds to the household sector, including private unincorporated enterprises. The unorganized sector also includes some formal activities on which there is no regular system of data availability. However, contribution of these formal activities in the unorganized sector is quite small. In the retail banking sector of India, this unorganized sector plays a very crucial role especially in the rural areas. It is surprising to note that despite a decade and a half of economic reforms and rapid progress in the banking sector, India's informal sector, particularly the rural segment, still has very limited access to formal finance. This sector is responsible for around 80% of the rural finances. The informal financial sources generally include funds available from the family or moneylenders who operate outside the legal and policy framework of banks. Apart from this, the CHIT fund is another form of credit source operated by groups of people for mutual benefit, but this approach has its own limitations. Credit in the informal system is usually available on tap. The loans are granted mostly without collateral and lengthy documentation formalities as the lender depends mainly on the personal knowledge of and contact with the borrower. The term commercial bank is referring to a bank or a division of a bank primarily dealing with deposits and loans from corporations or large businesses. A commercial bank is a financial intermediary which collects credit from lenders in the form of deposits and lends in the form of loans. A commercial bank holds deposits for individuals and businesses in the form of checking and savings account and certificates of deposit of varying maturities while a commercial bank issues loans in the form of personal and business loans as well as mortgages. Successful commercial banks increase their business by catering to the needs of all sizes of business. The best commercial banking small business strategies provide thoughtful services and a high attention to customized customer service, leading to increases in revenue and profits. 
They provide extra services that target small businesses. They also provide consulting services, business plan development, technical outsourcing, suppliers and legal services. These banks are now trying to decrease the complexity of all paperwork. Private banking is a term for banking, investment and other financial services provided by banks to private individuals investing sizable assets. The term private refers to the customer service being rendered on a more personal basis. Private bank in India being tech savvy and full of expertise have played a major role in the development of Indian banking industry. In the process, they have jolted public sector banks out of complacency and forced them to become more competitive. At present, private banks in India include leading banks like ICICI Bank, ING Vyas Bank, JNK Bank, Karnataka Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, SBI Commercial and International Bank, etc. Private sector banks play an important role in development of Indian economy. After liberalization, the banking industry underwent major changes. The economic reforms totally have changed the banking sector. RBI permitted new banks to be started in the private sector as per the recommendations of the Narsimha Committee. The Indian banking industry was dominated by public sector banks. They have made banking more efficient and customer friendly. Foreign bank means a banking institution incorporated or organized under the laws of a country other than India. The foreign banks in India are slowly but steadily creating a niche for themselves. The share of foreign banks in the business done in the country has been hovering between 5 and 7 percent during past decade. It is regulated as such by that country's or subdivision's government or any agency thereof engaged substantially in commercial banking activity and not operated for the purpose of evading the provisions of the Act. It has been seen in the past years that the foreign banks in India always brought an explanation about the prompt service to customers. After the setup of foreign banks in India, the banking sector in India also became competitive and accurate. A new rule announced by the Reserve Bank of India for the foreign banks in India in Budget 2008-2009 has put up great hopes among foreign banks which allow them to grow unregulated. Now foreign banks in India are permitted to set up local subsidiaries. The policy conveys that foreign banks in India may not acquire Indian ones except for weak banks identified by the RBI on its terms and their Indian subsidiaries will not be able to open branches freely. Reason for foreign banks to enter are that the RBI is following a liberal branch licensing policy for those foreign banks who want to go to the unbanked pockets. They have started sensing enormous business opportunities in financing trade and small and medium sectors in small towns of India. Participation in the growth curve of the Indian economy in the next four years will provide foreign banks a launchpad for greater business expansion when they got more freedom after April 2009. Regional rural banks were created in the 1970s exclusively to serve the credit needs of rural India and specifically those individuals, social groups and regions most excluded by the formal system of credit. For all their weaknesses, these banks passed an important international test, a cross-country study of rural credit institutions threw up the important finding that, in the period between 1988 and 1992 of all the institutions studied, regional rural banks in India incurred the lowest costs of administration, 8.1% of the total portfolio. An important feature of banking reforms has been to alter the equation between different sectors of banking, in this case to make the norms governing regional rural banks indistinguishable from those governing commercial banks, thus 
undermining their capacity to serve the special needs of the rural economy and the rural poor. These banks in India incurred the lowest cost of administration. There are now 196 RRBs in the 23 states of the country with 14,200 branches. These banks had dispersed over rupees 3,500 crores in credit and mobilized over rupees 4,100 crore in deposits. A cooperative bank is a financial entity which belongs to its members, who are at the same time the owners and the customers of their bank. An autonomous association of persons united voluntarily to meet their common economic, social and cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise is called a cooperative society. Cooperative banking is retail and commercial banking organized on a cooperative basis. The cooperative movement originated in the West, but the significance that such banks have assumed in India is rarely comparable anywhere else in the world. Their role in rural financing continues to be significant even today, and their business in the urban areas also has increased amazingly in recent years mainly because of the quick increase in the number of cooperative banks. The cooperative banks in the rural areas chiefly finance agricultural-based activities including farming, cattle, milk, hatchery, personal finance, etc., along with some small-scale industries and self-employment-driven activities. The cooperative banks in the urban areas in general finance different categories of people self-employment industries small-scale units home finance consumer finance personal finance etc cooperative banking institutions take deposit and lend money in most parts of the world now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly Successful commercial banks increase their business by catering to the needs of all sizes of business. Right or wrong? Right. Foreign bank means a banking institution incorporated or organized under the laws of a country other than India. Right or wrong? Right. Regional rural banks were created in the 1980s to serve the credit needs of rural banks. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. In retail banking, there are various participants, viz. unorganized sector, commercial banks, private banks, foreign banks, regional banks, cooperative societies coming in the retail banking sector of India. The informal sector is referred to as the unorganized sector. This sector generally corresponds to the household sector including private unincorporated enterprises. The unorganized sector also includes some formal activities on which there is no regular system of data availability. However, contribution of these formal activities in the unorganized sector is quite small. The term commercial bank is referring to a bank or a division of a bank primarily dealing with deposits and loans from corporations or large businesses. A commercial bank is a financial intermediary which collects credit from lenders in the form of deposits and lends in the form of loans. Private banking is a term for banking, investment and other financial services provided by banks to private individuals investing sizable assets. The term private refers to the customer service being rendered on a more personal basis. Foreign bank means a banking institution incorporated or organized under the laws of a country other than India. The foreign banks in India are slowly but steadily creating a niche for themselves. Regional rural banks were created in the 1970s exclusively to serve the credit needs of rural India and specifically those individuals, social groups and regions most excluded by the formal system of credit. A cooperative bank is a financial entity which belongs to its members 
who are at the same time the owners and the customers of their bank.